Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me for another Tip Tuesday. Last week, we took a look at a quick speed retouch going from Lightroom to Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at part one of how I set up that image inside of Lightroom. Let's go ahead and take a look. You can see on the screen in front of you, I have the same image of Harper. And what I'm going to do is walk you through my setup in Lightroom. Let me take a second and zoom in so that you can see a little better. And one of the first things I'll do is crop the image. So I just want to kind of get this cropped and lined up the way that I want. I think that will do. All right, so here's the image. And one of the first things I wanted to do was kind of warm it up. So I'm going to change the temperature here, warm up the image. I thought it was just a little cool for my taste. And this was actually a test shot that I had taken in the studio. Um, so, but I just liked the expression so much that I wanted to use it. So it's a little underexposed and there are lots of tonal changes that I'm going to make. But then you'll see as I take it into Photoshop next week, we can make some really vast improvements. So I'll bring up the exposure and I'll follow that up by capturing or recovering my highlights and then it's really my shadow clipping to get the darks back there. Kind of see how this is coming along. So here's the before and our after so far. And then I opened up the mid-tones just a little bit. So remember brightness is kind of mid-tone uh, brightness. So I'm going to pull that and then I just wanted to add a little bit of color. So I could do saturation but of course that's just too much. So I'll take that back and I'll just put in a little bit of vibrance, okay, so that'll give it some of the color I need. So overall, this really has me very close to what I want. There's just some minor tweaks that I need to make to the image. So I'll go in and I'll do my capture sharpening using the details panel, and then I'm just going to do a small amount of brush work to patch it up. So if we take a look, I'll jump into the details panel, and here what I'll do is first just add a little bit of noise reduction, just a tad, then I'm going to do my luminance sharpening and I'll hold the option or alt key so that I can get my sharpening going again I don't have to sharpen very much with the new changes to process version and I'll use my masking here remember white reveals the sharpening black conceals it so I'm just gonna slide this until we get the eye I don't want her skin tone so look here I don't want her skin tone so I'm just gonna pull the mask until I really get the edge of the eye, that's what I'm trying to focus on. Hey, maybe a little bit of pores are okay. I'm going to pull the kind of the edge of the eye, and that's what I want for the sharpening. So I'll zoom back out, right? and you can see again, here's kind of the before, after I cropped it, and now I've really opened it up. And last, I just got a little bit of brush work that I could do. So Lightroom 3 has a bunch of new presets, which include things like iris enhancements, uh, skin softening, as well as teeth whitening. So in the past, in Lightroom 2, we've already made these ourselves, so they went ahead and they added up to Lightroom 3. So I'm just going to grab the adjustment that says teeth whitening, and I do want to point out, if you take a look, teeth whitening is nothing more than a bump up of exposure and a little pullback of saturation, and if you wanted, you could add some clarity or sharpness, but I'm just going to use this, and I'll zoom in, and I'll just drop in my nodal point, so there you can see it, and then I'll begin to paint. Now what helps for me is I like to see the overlay okay, as I paint. So here, I've got the overlay turned on, and it won't take too long to actually color that in. Now I'm kind of sloppy here, so I'll fix that in a second. Okay, but not too long to paint that out, very quick. And remember, you hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, and then I can just kind of paint out where I had some issues. So right there, maybe back here a little bit, and the top of the lip, I kind of grab that. Right. So the overlay just shows me where I'm hitting. I can hit O for overlay again to turn it off. So there's my whitening. I missed a little spot right in here. So I'm going to make sure that I grab that. There we go. All right, so this is our teeth whitening. If I wanted to, I could actually go and do an iris and a hands. Now I'm going to just show you this real quick. I have to click on new to set a new nodal point, and then I'll change my effect preset to be iris and hands. So this is something you could do inside a Lightroom. All right, I'm just going to show you here. I kind of paint this. 
So here's my iris enhanced. I'll exaggerate it really bright so you can see where the change is happening right there. All right, so this could be your iris enhanced. So if I zoom out just a tad, you can see there are the two eyes. So one is enhanced. And again, I'll brighten it up a little bit so you can see. All right, so there's the one on the right that's enhanced, and her uh, eye uh, on your left is actually not. Um, so this is something that you could do inside a Lightroom. Take this into Photoshop next week, so I will delete that nodal point by just hitting the delete key. Let me go ahead and turn off my brushes and I'll zoom back out. And this is actually our finished image inside of Lightroom. It's prepped, it's ready to go. Once again, I want to show you the before. Okay, so here's the before, here's the after. And I'll zoom back out and I can actually put these side by side. So here are the before and afters side by side. Uh, that is, of course, after the crop. So next week, join me and I'll show you how I pull this into Photoshop and where I'll do the various skin enhancements and uh, the healing brush. Thanks for joining me for another week and I will see you again soon.